Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! It's the reshuffle that seems to have gone on for rather a long time. Days and days, in fact. But this lunchtime, we'll finally be getting details, we think, of who is in and who is out of Jeremy Corbyn's new-look shadow cabinet. Let's talk now to a man who knows what's going on, at least we hope so. Yes, Norman, you're laughing. I'm not filled with confidence. Anyway, the BBC's <laughs> assistant political editor, Norman Smith. This has been the longest reshuffle in history, with not that much going on. Is Jeremy Corbyn talking to every member of the Labour Party before he moves anyone? Joe, I was laughing because you suggested we might have some details yeah. uh, by lunchtime. I doubt it because we now uh, discover that the shadow cabinet meeting scheduled for quarter to one has been cancelled. Why? Because Mr Corbyn does not yet have a new shadow cabinet. So that meeting will take place, we do not know when, sometime later uh, this afternoon. So this is a reshuffle which has now been going on for more than 24 hours. So far, only one person has been ousted. That is the shadow culture secretary, Michael Duggar. In a way, not surprising, because he has been one of the most vociferous and public critics of Jeremy Corbyn. But what is surprising is the response to his been sacking, because a whole series of senior shadow cabinet ministers have issued statements backing Mr Duggar, saying what a terrific member of the shadow cabinet he is, how he manages to reach Ooh. out to northern working class voters, what a loss he'll be uh, to the shadow cabinet, and that from figures like Andy Burnham, Tom Watson, I mean, some of the big beasts in the shadow cabinet. So my sense is where we are now, Mr Corbyn finds himself hemmed in. He can't do what he wants to do, which is move Hillary Benn and move Maria Eagle, because he knows if he does that, he faces a shadow cabinet revolt and resignation. So where we are heading eventually, I think, is towards not a revenge reshuffle, but potentially a damp squib reshuffle. Right, so in the end, Jeremy Corbyn just realised he didn't have to power. do what he wanted to do in your mind, Norman. Yeah, I think he will present it as underlining how he's willing to listen to different voices. He's not going to carry out some ruthless sort of purge. The reality, though, I think is this. There are people around him who do want him to seize this moment in the wake of the Oldham by-election, in the wake even of the Syria vote, when something like 70% of the parliamentary party backed him, they want him to seize this moment, and they think he lacks the steel, the ruthlessness, to get rid of some of his dissidents and critics in the shadow cabinet. He, however, is... He likes to discuss things. He likes to talk things through. He likes, yes, to reach consensus. And I think, by inclination, he does not want to be in the push position of having to shove people out the door, never mind the threat of resignations, which there almost certainly would be, and a clear warning from uh, Rosie Winston, the chief whip, that if he did that, the shadow cabinet would implode because there would be a whole load of ministers who would say, right, we're out of here. Norman Smith, we'll leave you there for what may turn out to be a very long <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> With us now, former Shadow Chancellor Chris Leslie. Welcome Hello. back to The Daily Politics. So would you describe this as a revenge reshuffle or a purge so far? Well, Michael Duggar, of course, said that it would be wrong to have a revenge reshuffle. And I, look what's happened uh, to him. I'm not quite sure why he's been uh, reshuffled, what exactly his sin uh, was. But, uh, you know, I think he was very effective in opposing the government and opposing the Conservatives. I don't think removing him uh, makes Labour's chances of winning any greater. I'm afraid that there is a sort of natural impetus amongst the hard left who want to tighten their control. They want to uh, sideline uh, moderate voices when so they, they might the be more incremental. So. We don't know what the uh, timescale is of this, uh, this particular reshuffle, but I don't think anybody should be surprised about that is the nature of the hard left. But you built this up. I mean, you and some of yours, you described the moderate colleagues, have obviously been briefing about this revenge reshuffle, this purge that was going to happen that you so feared. It's just not happening. Well, we don't, we don't know because the reshuffle's going on and on and on. I mean, obscuring, of course, a lot of very good campaigning that people were doing on rail fares, today's housing bill in the House of Commons. The government, for goodness sake, is trying to hide beneath this uh, news of the reshuffle a major change on European referendum policy. And, uh, you know, what we should be doing, of course, is appealing to the wider public and listening to what the public's views are. Uh, you know, w this is all before we even get to some of the economic and the fiscal issues where, according to that 
that poll yesterday, only 18% of the public apparently have confidence in the current front bench view when it comes to the economy. I think, Councillor, what was wrong with Michael Duggar? Well, I think Jeremy Corbyn, as leader of the Labour Party, is within his rights to pick the people that he wants to serve in his shadow cabinet. And if he doesn't want people in the shadow cabinet who spend more time attacking the Labour Party leadership than the Tory benches opposite us, then he's perfectly within his rights to do that. I think Jeremy's in a very strong position. I think we ended 2015 on a strong note. We managed to push back uh, against the Tory government on tax credits and on police cuts. Um, and he's trying to realign his top team mm -hmm. uh, to be match more what the PLP is and more what the party is. Because so, I think the current shadow cabinet, frankly, is to the right of where the PLP is. If you look, for instance, on the vote on Syria, I'm very, I'm um, more Labour MPs voted with Jeremy Corbyn than they did with so Hillary So is he going ben. to move, so you'd I expect think, him to move Hillary Ben? Then, no, I so. don't expect him to well, move Well, you've ben. just said you want him to realign. Realignment. Right. But I think so he's not realigning his top team. I mean, if he was realigning his top team, he'd move Hillary Ben no. because he holds a contradictory position to him on airstrikes. If he's going to realign his top team, he would be moving Maria Eagle from Shadow Defence because she doesn't agree with his view on Trident. So he's bottled it. Well, the reshuffle hasn't finished so yet. So you are expecting so that I, to happen. So I, I don't know what to expect. Would you be I'm disappointed if room. it doesn't happen? And no, I won't be disappointed with anything that comes out of this reshuffle. It's a minor changes. Um, it's not a full I, look, it's I, not I, all I, out. I really regret career. the fact that you've said what you said about Michael Duggar and saying that somehow he was spending more time uh, attacking well, the Labour, Labour leadership than, than attacking clear. the Conservatives. He is one of our most effective communicators when it comes to being an effective fighting force Calling against some of the changes that this government are putting and into place. And I hope place. he continues he, to do that from the But you just, you, you shouldn't have, I don't think it was right to have characterised Michael in that way. His sin, I think, was to have, to dare to have different views. And of course, we know that the hard left famously cannot tolerate any who dissent. Who are the hard left, Chris? Well, we know who the hard is left are. Is it Cat? Um, um, unfortunately, there the are a lot of left? people now who are, are in the you know, uh, ascendancy I, within, the, within the Labour Party language. who associate with the hard left. Of course you will. I'm, I'm a Labour MP. Don't I'm proud to, to be Labour, and I'm, I'm assuming that you feel the same. And I got elected as a Labour MP, frankly, You just to, said that we were also right, to right wing. And hold them to account, not to fight internally. Look, but it's right that Jeremy Corbyn has a team around him that he trusts. Oh, yes. Because Absolutely. he can't be an effective leader if he doesn't know. So he didn't trust Michael. He didn't trust Michael Duggar. Briefing against him. But, but well, Catsmith, it has to be one way or the other. He's either having a realignment or, or he's not. But actually, to, to, to put to you, Michael Duggar did describe momentum as stupid. Um, and that is the grassroots organisation, not just of uh, Labour Party members, but others. I mean, is that the sort of language that will help this integration to stop this infighting within Labour? What we all care about is Labour winning in, in the future. And if we end up with a hard left agenda, whether it's printing money, whether it's just nationalisation without compensation, whatever it, you, it happens to be, then the public will take a view on that. And I don't know what you think about the, the, the YouGov opinion poll that put Labour at only 18% of trust. Well, um, amongst the economy. Opinion puzzle, the uh, after well, the last I think election. you need to. We all need to wake up and listen to what the public. There are a lot of people in marginal seats, mm. yourself included. Who we have to start not just listening <coughs> to those who feel uh, very strongly about a sort of hard left wing position, but who actually want to listen to what the wider public want. And if we see people like Maria Eagle, for example, uh, being sidelined because she cares about a strong defence for our country, I think that would be massively, deeply regrettable. I hope it doesn't happen. We'll see what how this pans out. I mean, Kat Smith, it, it, this. This is what the Labour Party has become, this infighting between two different factions when there are issues uh, that people are worried about, whether it's the economy, whether it's flooding, whether it is airstrikes in Syria. And this is all we've had from the Labour Party, the loyal opposition, for the last few weeks. Well, as a party, then we will have debate within, you know, I, there's no Labour MP I agree with 100%, um, and the same for Chris as well. We are a coalition of people who, who come together around the values that the country. But you're not coming we, together, are you? Chris people Leslie that we represent is... are better off under a Labour government than a Tory government, if, and that's where we agree. Let's hope and then that... internally we will have these discussions. Do I'll you just, think I, I... Jeremy Corbyn is going to lead Labour to victory in 2020? Well, I mean, it's so far away. But do you? I worry that the way we're going is moving away from electability. I hope that we can wake up and realise that the public, having uh, looking at this, they want to hear about, uh, you know, campaigning on flooding. They want mm. to hear about what's happening on the housing bill. The European referendum, but all they see is um, a sort of narrowing In view, hard a sort left. of focusing inwardly, navel gazing, rather than engaging with the wider public on the things that they care about. That's okay. my Cats, anxiety. So what do you say to that? Well, 
I'd say that this week we've been campaigning on the railways Nobody's and heard on rail fares, and we have, and I've been doing it, and you've been doing where, it. And where have the public not heard of What we've, what heard we've done is we've moved our policy position actually to something that's a lot closer to where the public are than what we had previously. If you ask the public, they'd like to see the railways back in public ownership. Is that hard left? Right. Well, on that basis, hard left. I mean, Tommy Shepard, you have some experience with the uh, Labour Party. What do you say when you view this going on? Well, in, in one sense, where I am in, in Edinburgh East and, and Scotland, it, this debate's less relevant because the Labour Party's been replaced as the centre-left party by the SNP. But do you agree with Pat said, Smith or do you well, agree with Chris well, Leslie? Well, well, hold on. I, mean, it, I do think, though, that people of England need a centre-left, united, coherent alternative to the current government. And who and best it, represents that, well, do you and, think? And, and I think it's sad that that's not there at the minute. I think two things need to happen, to be honest, because I think all of us have witnessed in the House of Commons the most amazing infighting and almost fratricide going on in the, in the Labour benches. And it all does seem to me, as an observer, to be attacks on the current leadership of Jeremy Corbyn rather than attacks from Corbyn and the others against others. So, right, so I, I think two things need to happen. I think it, it, the people, perhaps on, the, on Chris's wing of the party, need to uh, rec recognise and respect, you don't have to agree with it, but recognise and respect that Jeremy Corbyn has a mandate to be the leader. But I think also Jeremy Corbyn needs to show some leadership. I mean, the way there's been a lot of pussyfussing about and it looks like indecision, not whipping decisions, not, you know, not, not, not seeking backing of the parliamentary party on certain things, that needs to stop. And I think he needs to start you know, acting like a leader and he needs to get the respect from all wings of the party to be able to do it. Right. Do you think you'll get a call from Jeremy Corbyn? Do you think you should serve? Isn't it the, your model, well, as you I, say, to come in? I, I don't have the patience of uh, some of those who I think have stuck it out in the shadow cabinet, I'm afraid. I, I don't think it's right to s sit by and watch some good colleagues being sacked. Michael Duggar, principally, is the only one we know about so far, because they, they are good colleagues who care about Labour winning, who care about campaigning, who are being disparaged, sadly, as somehow wanting to uh, attack Labour itself rather what than fighting to What are you going to do about it, Win a general election. What are you going to do about it? Well, Move against him. I, I think I think it's important that um, uh, those of us who d do believe in a moderate centre-left Labour Party fight strongly for that, and, and are more vocal for that. And I, I think probably at this stage the hard left need to be more prepared for that. Right. So what um, are you proposing then? How well, are you going to fight for that within the moderate let's wing? Let's see of the how party? this reshuffle pans. But you're going to challenge Jeremy Corbyn and the hard let, left that you seem to characterise. I, 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 I want us to focus on getting the Labour Party in tip-top shape to actually start appealing to the general public again. That matters more than anything. You've been itching to come in, but briefly, Andrew Mitchell. Well, I don't want to intrude on, on no. private... No, well, private you don't brief. have to. We can move but, on. But, but, but I just make two points. First is that any party that is seriously considering replacing someone of the character and quality of Hillary Benn is not in a good place, particularly given some of the names that have been suggested. And secondly... He doesn't agree with the leader. And in the end, but, but the second point I make is that in the end, Jeremy Corbyn has to take possession of his party, otherwise he will be buffeted around on the top of the waves. Well, I'm and that is why, to some extent, I have some sympathy with Cat about him All having right. to impose his views on his party to make progress. Well, there you go, Cat Smith. All that advice. Thank you for the advice.